Well, congratulations to you guys, too. I mean, that was a big win. And uh, like you said, I'd beat Thomas ever. I mean, that's huge. Um, heck, what can I say about that game? I mean, I guess it was fun to watch. I keep getting told it was, you know, fun to watch. Uh, but it was definitely uh, heart racing for me and, and, and our guys. But uh, um, I will say this. Last year, we were in that position a couple times. We were, we were going to drive against Henderson. Last year, uh, two minute, two minute situation, um, and we didn't get it done. And then the other night, we got it done. Uh, and and that's something that a team, a young team, a team trying to change its culture has got to learn. You got to learn how to do that, all right? And be getting put in a situation to do it. You can't practice that. There's no practice for that. Um, and our guys got it done. They they figured out a way. And I, you know, I told them, Lauren, the huddle. There's 45 seconds left. I said, Hey, we're not playing for overtime. We're gonna go win. We're gonna go score and win. And um, we did. We did that, and uh, our kicker did a great job. Um, he was a guy that literally got zero reps till two days before the game because both our other guys pulled a quad and a groin. So I'm like, all right, Mike Fridley, here we go. He's eight for eight for extra points, and he kicks a, kicks a game with a field goal. Um, ice cold, and he got a nickname after that game, uh, and uh, Blaine Money Langford is what they call him now. So, hey, I'm going to tell you what, the kid, ice cold, didn't, didn't phase him one bit. He's like, Coach, I got it. Kicked the field goal and he won. But, uh, or we won. But a little bit more about the game. I mean, um, that team's going to surprise some people offensively. They're very, very good offensively. Coach Jackson and myself do a lot of the same things offensively. If you watch the, the actual game and the X's and O's of the game, it was like two mirrored offenses playing against, you know, the other defense. Uh, there wasn't, uh, you know, there was a lot of great plays made. Uh, defensively, we, the first series, we stopped and we get a, we get a turnover. Joby St. Fleur causes a fumble and hurts his ankle in the same play. He doesn't play the rest of the game. Your best, if my, our best defensive player was out the rest of the game. Um, that did affect us a lot, more than we hoped it would. You know what I mean? We hoped that wouldn't hurt us so bad, but it does because we're not quite deep enough to replace an All-American. I mean, and, and some teams are that way. They are deep enough uh, that they can replace a guy with a guy that's good, maybe an all-conference player. But we replace him, and we're replacing him with a guy that's not an all-conference player. And um, that hurts us bad. And then later on in the game, we're still up by 21, I think. Jordan Norris, our best defender, preseason All-American, best corner, number two, gets kicked out of the game. All right. He earlier in the game got a jawing penalty where him and the receiver were talking to talking to each other. Threw the flag on both both guys, first quarter. They were, the refs were trying to get the noise talking to stop. All right, that's fine. But you can't get another one, all right? Um, get a call from the conference that shouldn't have kicked him out because he did nothing wrong the second time at all. Um, the refs were wrong, and that hurt us bad. I mean, because what they did was we uh, – and earlier in the game, we lost our second corner, Eric Cook, to an ankle injury. So in the first quarter, we lost Joby St. Fleur and, and our second cornerback. So once Jordan gets let out of the game, we're already playing with our third cornerback and Aaron Barnes on one side. We put in Michael Thompson, our fourth corner, uh, you know, when we're up by 21. And they exposed us. And like any good team does, they exposed us. And that number nine receiver they had was really, really, really good. Uh, he had 202 yards receiving in the game. Um, was just a really good player. I think he caught three t three of their touchdowns. Um, so they expose us when we get when we uh, we talk about depth. The coach Sawyer talks about it too. You start getting key guys injured, and there's not a lot coming back. You know, now I I mean, there's certain positions where you can you know handle that at receiver. We can handle that at running back. We can probably handle that because we're pretty darn good at those two positions. Um, but defensively, we're just not we're just not uh, deep enough to withstand a blow of losing two preseason All-Americans. <laughs> and uh, you know, should we have still you know been able to bar our neck next man up? Yeah, that's that's what we expect. Our expectation is, hey, next guy in, stop him. But that wasn't the reality, all right. And and in that case, those two corners, first game they've ever played, ever played. For us, and that was tough. There's a learning experience for him, and um, Aaron ended up with 11 tackles in the game, but and four passes defended. But uh, we still gave up those those late touchdowns, and 
Um, actually, the thing that I was most upset about was when we turned the ball over ourselves uh, on our own in our own end, and we give up a touchdown the next play. That, I was more upset about that than I was any of the other touchdowns that we gave up, and that was in the first half. Uh, second half, it was it became an offensive shootout is what it became. And once you get into those type of games, it's almost the expectation. Both teams, you know, who's going to get the ball last is going to win. And um, we got into that. So I've been in that situation before, not here until la- until last week, but situation before, and, and it's kind of where the momentum goes towards the offenses, both sides. That's what was happening. Um, really kind of thrilling to watch, uh, but terrible to coach. Uh, terrible to coach. Uh, very, very um, – you know, not traditional football that you saw. You know, wasn't you know, run the ball, run the ball, and then you know, third down, try to throw it. We were throwing it on first down. Um, we were throwing it, you know, all the time. But well, some key key things from the game as well is we averaged five yards a carry. Last year we didn't ever have a game where we averaged over four yards a carry. Not one game. <coughs> had five yards a carry last game. Um, our running backs and our O line did great. Reed Miller dropped back to throw the ball 44 times, got hit twice. Talk about O line improvement. All right, O line's greatly improved, much much better. Uh, tribute to uh, our O line coach Ben McKeg and um, uh, those new O linemen that we have. I mean, they 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 were really 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 up to the challenge. Um, of course, Reed, you know, he threw a uh, conference record, seven touchdowns in the game. Um, was conference, and He just got named about 20 minutes ago Conference Player of the Week um, for his performance. You know, set, set a school record, broke his own school record for touchdown passes in the game. Um, so he was playing pretty pretty high level. And then, uh, man, our receivers, they, they, can, they can catch the football, make some plays. Uh, and I told some people that this is the best group overall receivers I've probably ever had. And from top to bottom, we go, we got about 11 to 12 of them that can just flat out play. And uh, <clears throat> first, first play of the game, we run our big running back up the up the middle. And I noticed they're pressing our best receiver, Horatio. I'm like, they're pressing Horatio. That's not very smart. So the very second, the next play, throw a deep to Horatio, touchdown. They can't cut guard him. The rest of the game, if you notice, they're about 15 yards off of him. They're so scared of him. Um, and he still caught 130, 30 yards worth of passes. Um, then Riley Hess made some great catches in third down, third down situations. Um, we're up by one point. And we run, we run just a streak route with him, and he makes basically is on our sideline going towards the tiers. Makes probably the best catch I've ever seen in person. Anyway, I've seen you know highlights of Beckham and all that, but Riley, the guys in between Riley and the ball, and Riley. Reaches back, jumps up in the air, reaches back one hand and brings it in. Um, it was a great, great play. It was a play we needed. Um, we scored probably too fast right there, and then then Coda scores a touchdown, rushing touchdown the next play. Probably scored too quick there. <coughs> Could have used more of the time. Um, but it is what it is. Uh, you know, I, I, I knew we needed to score um, because if we had to punt the ball and give the ball back, I just wasn't confident that we were going to be able to stop them. So I knew we had to score no matter what. And we continue to do that. Um, so basically, that's it about the game. Um, you know, we're one and zero. That's all that matters. We're the only Oklahoma Division two that won a game. Panhandle lost, UCO lost, Northeastern lost, Southeastern lost, Southwestern lost, um, East Central lost. All of them lost except for us. So that's a good thing. Good, very good thing. Um, so. Uh, like I said, we're 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 right where we want to be. One and zero. We're going to get some guys back uh, health wise. Jordan will be back because uh, uh, the conference ruled that that shouldn't have been a penalty anyway. So he's not suspended or anything. He going moving forward. Um, he's going to get to play. Um, and Joby St. Fleur will be back. You know, it's the first game of the year. I didn't want him hurt the rest of the year if we pushed it too hard. And, and uh, he was in a significant amount of pain. So. He just uh, we held him out the rest of the game. Um, he'll be he'll be ready to go. He'll actually practice today. Um, so on the injury front, that's all we got. Uh, well, I'd say that one of our receivers, our freshman receivers, Gavin Garner, uh, broke his collarbone, so he'll be out for the year. We'll end up redshirting him. He'll get a red, medical redshirt. Uh, but uh, the other freshman played extremely well. That played uh, the nose guard uh, Blake played played great for his first start. He ended up starting, which I didn't know we were going to start him. We ended up starting him. Um, 
game time decision. Uh, Kerry Hall didn't make any catches, but had a great did a great job at receiver blocking downfield. Um, and then Maurice Wright, the the freshman safety number twenty four, he was all over the field. If you watch that game, all over the field, he was the one that had the interception in the end zone. All right, for their two point conversion, stopped them from getting the two point conversion. Was forty nine forty eight. They were going for the win right then, uh, which. With that much time on the clock, I wouldn't have done just knowing that we were going to score again. Um, and Maurice read, read the quarterback perfectly, picked the ball off, and that was a great play. That was a veteran play for a freshman. Um, he's going to be really good. Really, is We've had some great safeties to play here, and this kid is on that path, on that path. If he stays, stays uh, doing what he's doing. I'm uh, very excited about our young guys. Um, uh, but anyway, anything about that game? I'm sure there's probably some questions. Watching that game, it was crazy. So, none? All right, well, hey, they converted an onside kick, and that's a, that's a hard play to convert. The kicker kicked it perfect. I mean, it was I was right there. I was like, wow, that's off to you. Um, it was a great kick, and it was just one of those opportune times that they got the ball back, and unfortunately we couldn't stop them right there to hold them. Um, or the game, I think, would have been right over, over right then. But they got it, and uh, hats off to them. Um, and I told Coach Jackson after the game, they came all the way from Monticello. They're down by 28 points two different times. And to get a group of 85 new players like that, now he only, he only could travel 60. So um, I think 41 of them were brand new guys out of the 60. Uh, to get them to play that hard together and fight that hard after being down is commendable. and. and um, if, if I'm a head coach, that's, you know, I'm proud of my kids, and he should be proud of his guys. So they fought their butt off. Um, you know, they just came up short, and they're going to they're gonna beat somebody this year because that offense is really, really good. And uh, uh, they're really, really lengthy. They've got length, and they create some matchup problems, especially at the receiver position. And they got a tough running back, which, which can get the hard yards. So, uh, you know, they're going to sneak up on somebody, and, and, and they're going to – they're going to beat somebody they probably shouldn't. And um, <clears throat> so, anyway, enough about that. Um, this week we traveled down to Southern Arkansas. Southern Arkansas, is uh, they beat Southwestern this weekend um, at Southwestern. So we're going to go down to Magnolia, Arkansas, which is our longest trip. And because um, we don't go to Monticello. Monticello is actually a little farther. Uh, but going down to Southern Arkansas um, to play them. And, and last year was uh, they beat us 40 – I think it was 44 to 14 or 41 to 14. I can't remember the exact score. Uh, and they, they did some things to us defensively we weren't expecting offensively. And then their offense is very multifaceted. They can run the ball, they can throw the ball. Um, they don't create as much matchup problems as Monticello as far as their size, all right? But but their uh, their their system does as far as you know you got to play both the run and pass. And, and like Coach said, if you can shut down the run. And shut down the run, make them one-dimensional, and then, you know, make them make them throw the ball to beat you. That's the way you want to do it. And um, you know, if we can stop the run, slow them down run-wise, and uh, make them one-dimensional, we got, you know, uh, a very good chance we think to win the game. Um, you know, we, we expect our guys to go down and play hard. And, and uh, you know, first road game you're always worried about as a head coach, like, hey, I got everything done, you know, and we stay the night and all that stuff. Make sure we got guys locked in and and ready for the, all the distractions that come with traveling. And I think our guys, you know, are bought into what we're trying to do and what we're trying to build, and, and I think they're going to be fine as far as handling the road trip. Um, we stop in, in Muskogee in practice uh, on Friday, and then we'll, we'll stay in Texarkana, actually, stay the night in Texarkana, and then uh, uh, drive the remaining, I think it's like 58 miles or something, from Texarkana to, to Magnolia. Um, to finish out the trip, and we play the game. We don't play the game until 6 o'clock at night, so we do have some time to relax and rest on Saturday and, and get our last-minute prep in. Um, but um, anyway, uh, very excited. Very, our guys are extremely excited. We're exactly where we want to be, you know, want to know and, and have a shot at uh, um, playing the game this Saturday and, and winning the game and going, being 2-0. and I talked about – to our guys, I always talk about being um, milestones, and our first milestone was to win a game. Our second milestone is to win on the road and to have a winning streak. So um, we could accomplish both those things with a W, and uh, that's what we're looking to do. So um, we had 
practiced Friday, we practiced Saturday, practiced Sunday, gave them off Monday, gave them off yesterday. Um, we'll practice today, tomorrow, and uh, Thursday, and then uh, travel on Friday. So that's kind of what our schedule looks like. Any questions? I need your travel schedule. Yes. You do. <coughs> Got to get it to you. <laughs> Got to get it to you. Anything else? All right. Well, thank you guys, and uh, hope we come back with a win on Saturday. All right.